Hello, my name is Ademar Araos and I am the industry expert for HVAC and refrigeration in Modalon. In this video, we are going to be discussing the engineering design and simulation of residential heat pumps using Modalon system simulation platform, Modalon Impact. The evolution of residential heat pumps goes back a long way, but the pace of new development is continuously increasing. What started as a simple heating system has now been advanced to include new technologies, which makes the potential of heat pumps today to be almost 70% more efficient than the heat pumps of the late 90s, for example. Additionally, we now have air source, water source, geothermal, exhaust air, gas absorption heat pumps that can service both residential and industrial systems all over the world. And when technologies like heat pumps change so rapidly, there is a need for engineering tools that support the design process and help answering design questions such as, will my technology will withstand the test of time or how cost effective will the technology be? This is where simulation comes in. With model and impact, you can model and simulate different thermodynamic systems. In this case, different variants of heat pumps. From validated and pre-configured models to expert design components, Model and Impact has what you need to build virtual prototypes and models of your heat pump systems. So you can evaluate how the system will perform under different operating conditions. For this video purpose, we're going to go through the modeling and simulation of an air source heat pump system. We're going to explore design changes like the condenser sizing, changing superheat levels, or changing different heating loads. We will also explore how the system performs when changing different refrigerants, in this case, R32 and propane. I'll start by logging into Modelon Impact. Modelon Impact is Modelon's cloud-based system simulation solution, meaning that my team and I can access this tool from anywhere we have internet access. First, I need to create a workspace. I'll name it Heat Pump Demo. Then the tool loads an empty canvas. If I open up the left pane, I can see the libraries I have access to. Currently, the Modelica based library. So I need to add the libraries required for the system simulation. Model and Impact Pro users have access to 17 Modelons Modelica based libraries. These libraries contain components and models for a variety of applications that span multiple industries. To start model on our heat pump, I'm going to add the vapor cycle library. This library is used to design vapor cycle systems for heating, cooling, and waste heat recovery. You can explore this library and see that there are different components. There is also the experiment section with example models. We have examples for air conditioning, liquid source and air source heat pumps. I'll select the air source heat pump. As you can see, the typical components of a vapor cycle are already included in the system. These are the condenser, the expansion valve, the evaporator, and compressor. Additional components, such as sensors for superheating and subcooling, pipes, a receiver, and the boundary conditions for secondary fluids are also included. There are also visualizers, like the pressure and tapping diagram for tracking results. I can also select different refrigerants. In this case, I'll select R32. If I check any component, I can see that the parameters are locked. So to start customizing, first I create a container, a top-level package called heat pump system. Then I need to duplicate the heat pump from the library into this project. So I right-click and duplicate too. Now I have access to an editable version. 
A great feature for power users is that model on impact gives access to the entire model code layer. This feature helps having more visibility into the inner workings of the model and also gives you the power of customization in your hands. I'll first run the base model using the default parameters. Some of the main parameters are summarized in the init record. And this will serve as a starting point for further refinement and experimentation. Before running the system, I'll change to experiment mode and activate the right pane. And there I locate the analysis section. There I can set the start and stop time. And as an advanced option, I can configure or select different solvers. I'll run the simulation using the play button. Once the simulation is completed, I can explore different results. For example, the COP, the compressor power, the condenser and evaporator power exchange, pressure levels, and the mass of the working fluid. I can group these variables into a view, for example, called summary. I can also plot the trajectories for these variables. This is done by a simple drag and drop into the canvas. I plot, for example, the power for the condenser, evaporator, and I also plot the COP trajectories. Additionally, I can track how the cycle evolves during the simulation. This by using the pH diagram and the time slider. So now the simulation reached a COP of 3.06. Let's see if we can improve it. Let's study now the condenser heat exchanger. For this example, a counterflow heat exchanger was selected. In experiment mode, the right panel shows the different parameters that characterize this component. Exploring the different parameters, we can identify the parameter N. This parameter indicates the discretization in the heat exchanger. Our heat exchangers are discretized to capture better phase transitions. We can also check other parameters like the wall material and others. It is important to mention that one can also opt for imperial units going to settings units imperial. I'll modify the length of the tubes. This parameter affects the heat transfer of both sides. I will modify using the range operator and I will set five experiments. I may verify the modifications and I just run the simulation. Let's explore the results by changing to results mode. In this mode, one can access the different variables calculated during simulation. Our interest is exploring the heat transfer area at the condenser, so I click on the condenser component, and then locate summary, which contains the main variables for this model. I select QFlow sec, the heat transfer from the condenser to the air. I can click on the eye icon to activate an ST key, which shows the value of these variables at a certain time. But since I'm interested in trajectories, I plot this by drag and drop on the canvas. I'll first configure the plots by changing the color of lines for the different experiments. The influence of the heat transfer area on the heat flow and COP is now visible. Two main things are interesting. First, the heat flow doesn't change much with the different areas. But at the smallest heat transfer area, the COP is much lower than in the other cases. This is explained by the compressor working extra to reach higher pressures and temperatures to maintain the heat transfer levels. So in this case, we identify an undersized condenser. 
Let's now explore the effect of superheating on the system. Superheat is controlled by the expansion valve, which regulates the mass flow to reach the desired superheat level at the evaporator outlet. Exploring this expansion valve, I can see that among the different parameters we have the superheat set point. If we go to the advanced tab, I can also see the parameters for the internal controller. This controller, together with the valve characteristics, model the physics of the valve, and as mentioned before, regulates the mass flow. Our users have also the possibility to establish custom control strategies or import advanced control systems to be tested with our plant models. I'll create a new experiment, this one called Superheat, for three different superheating levels, 5, 10, and 15 degrees. Let's explore the results. This time, I click on the summary component and plot the COP. I configure again the line color for the different experiments. The results indicate that the COP is higher at the lower superheating. To understand this effect, I plot the mass flow rate for the three cases. This plot shows that to reach a higher superheating, the valve decreases the mass flow. Decreasing the mass flow rate reduces the heat transfer, which explains the lower COP. Therefore, I should try to maintain lower superheat levels, but also ensure that no liquid reaches the compressor. Let's now explore how the heat pump responds to changes to the heating load, which is represented by the airflow at the condenser side. First, I create a new experiment called heat load. Then I modify the mass flow using the ramp and the boundary conditions. I modify the height, the duration, and the start time. I'll run this experiment for a longer time, around one hour. Exploring the results, first I plot the mass flow rate so I can verify the change in post on the system. Then I'll plot the COP, and this shows a much lower COP when operating at partial load. Lastly, let's explore how the system would perform when using a refrigerant with even lower GWP, propane. I'll first run the system using R32 and the optimized size for the condenser. I'll save the results with the name R32. Now I'll click on a component, for example the condenser, and change the refrigerant to propane. Then I click on propagate. This will change the working fluid at the different components of the system. And that simplify the process. Now I click on simulate. For comparison, I'll rename the results to propane and I'll plot the COP. We can notice how the propane reaches a higher COP and thus would theoretically perform better. I also plot the heat flow from the condenser. Here we can see that using propane actually reduces the heating capacity. This is a simplified comparison, and further details such as compressor maps should be considered to reach strong conclusions. However, this workflow reflects how easily we can explore different variants. 
This thanks to our continuous efforts on updating model on the database for different refrigerants. Let's summarize the results from the design exploration. We could identify that the condenser was undersized and thus we doubled the length of the tubes. We also identified that the higher superheat levels reduce the system performance and then we decided to maintain around 5 degrees superheat temperature the necessary to protect the compressor from the slugging. Then, when the airflow at the condenser is reduced, the system performance decreases rapidly. This confirms the importance of avoiding potential air blockage. Finally, changing the working fluid represents a trade-off between performance and heating capacity. Using propane gives a higher COP, but using R32 results in a higher heating capacity. We can continue exploring model on impact capabilities, for example, running sensitive analysis or optimization studies for this topology. We can also change the topology and include secondary loops or change to water source heat pumps. We can also explore multi-execution to run a large set of exp experiments in parallel. Or finally, we can also explore the integration of these systems within building simulation platforms. And that's it. I was able to explore and propose design improvements. It is really that easy to use system simulation for better decisions. So for more information on system simulation and model on impact, the Model on Help Center is a great free resource for finding walkthroughs like this, additional material, trainings, and documentation. Of course, probably the best way to see how system simulation can work for you is to talk to us. So please fill out the form, request for a demo below or in the description of this video, so you can talk with one of Modelon's experts today.